Good. Good, good, good. Hey, uh, so um, Kenneth Sims, we hear live Mill City Boxing. Um, man, uh, were you able to watch any boxing uh, this last night? Uh, not not really. I had a, a event at my house. I had a whole bunch of family and friends over. So I ain't really. I was I was like kind of in and out trying to watch it, but yeah. So, so talk to me. Um, you know what's next for your career? I seen that a uh, great performance in your last. Uh, it, it put you in title contentions. Am I right? Yeah, I'm uh number two in the WBA now. So. I mean, right now I'm just trying to see what what's gonna happen with that WBA title that really got that I don't know what he's doing with it. Cause I see he's trying to fight Ryan, then O'Hara Davies saying he don't want to take step aside money, but I don't know. So I just wait and see how that's gonna play out. And then, what you think about your division, man? Um, when we talk about your division, we have uh, Regis Pro Grace, we have Subriel Matias. We have Tiafimo Lopez is coming back out of retirement. And then, obviously, the guy that you just mentioned, um, if you had a list of guys that uh, you believe hold uh, the highest skill set to the worst skill set, I'm sure you're going to say Roley at, at, at the four, forefront. Um, but what about the other three? Uh, I mean, I think it's a, a stacked division, I think. Uh, when you get to the top of the division, it's all uh, like say if they was all the people was to fight each other, it's just on the, based on who gonna win is strategy and how good they execute their plan and take care take care of business. I don't think it's a big skill gap at the top of 140. Sure. Okay. I think it's like the intangibles that make the difference in those fights. Mm. Do you believe that? Possibly, you know, guys that um, don't hold the title, guys like, you know, Richardson Hitchens and uh, Antonio um, Gary Russell. Uh, do you think those guys um, are kind of like, and yourself, more on that, like, trying to get that shot? Yeah, for sure. I, think, I mean, I include them in what I said because I feel like they're they kind of right where I'm at. They're they at the top, but they need the opportunity to fight the top guys to prove it. So, I think they right where I'm at saying that when it at the end of those fights is gonna come down to who won more, who executing their game plan better, and who just doing what they need to do to pull out the win. I don't think it's a big skill gap at the at the top. Not I'm not not like say it's of course of course it's gonna be a skill gap when you drop at a drop off at some point, but I think like all the top guys, it's not really that much of a gap. Right. Right. Um, like, uh, if you had, like, a, a hit list, what would it be? I mean, Roby got that WA belt right now, so he number one. Mm. So, uh, I mean, for real, I ain't even thought about nothing else. It's whoever I got to beat to get that title that I'm in line to get. So, so you're focused on the WBA route? Yeah, because I'm, I'm number two in WBA, and then WC got me at, like, 24 or something like that uh and then i ain't, i'm not ranked in the other two so okay is that is that something that you're trying to you know work on as well because like last time i talked to gary russell antoine russell he mentioned that he's like you know i want to be ranked in every sanctioning body yeah. i want to be able to put myself in um you know in contention yeah in, pos yeah, in position and make them make moves uh yeah i talked to my uh my people about it uh I mean, I feel like I should be ranked in all of them because I think it's, I'm clearly at the like at least top fifteen in every. I should be every top fifteen in every organization, but in every sanctioning body. But you know how it go. Uh, I don't know. You know how it go. <laughs> yeah. Um, first time I seen you, um, and I feel like a lot of people's first time seeing you was when you defeated um, Edwin Rodriguez. Okay. Um, you know, um, but I've heard about you. Uh, I'm friends with a lot of boxers, and a lot of people talk about your skill set. Um, but nevertheless, um, you know, last time I remember listening to you, you was already campaigning in a lower weight division, and then you ended up beating Rodriguez, and you decided to want to continue nah. on 40. Uh-uh. Uh, I only fought it. I fought at 135 like two times when I first time, bro. And I've been at 140 since then. Okay. I just, I just, uh, I just had been fighting 
before the Elvis fight. I fought once, a full rounder, because that's the only thing I can get. Uh, but now nah, I've been at 140 for majority of my career. It's just, I just haven't been fighting. Like even before the Elvis fight, I had to fight a bigger guy because the fight was supposed to be a contract at like 143, and then. They called and asked, can we go to 145? We went to 145, then we got there, and he was like 150 something. Okay, okay. So are you comfortable at 140? Like, as far as the weight, do you feel like you could drop down and get a bigger fight? Or is this 140, like, it's hard for you? It's, like, perfect? Nah, 140 not hard. 140, I'm cool at 140. I, I wouldn't say that I wanted, I would want to drop to 135. Though. I, wouldn't, I don't even think I'd try that. Unless it makes sense, but I don't think I think 140. I'm, I'm most comfortable at 140. I feel mm. strong at 140. I feel good at 140. So, mm. people in the comment section says, uh, What do you think about uh, Arnold Barboza? I tried, I mean, he turned down fights with me already like two or three times. So, hey, the, uh, and it, it was public. Uh, when he fought his main event on ESPN, top rank, like was talking about they asked him why he turned the fight down with me of course he lied and said i ain't turned down no fights but he literally turned down fights with me like two on two or three separate occasions mm, wow wow um you you oppose a uh a high skill set i gotta say but in your last fight you showed a lot of dog as well uh, i've seen that um but my opinion was I felt like you could have just outboxed your opponent. What was the, the, the reasoning of wanting to like dog it out with him? Uh and I ain't really I ain't really going there looking to do that. It's uh I kinda so I expected based on his record, I expected like some power, like a lot of power, because he was not he had nine wins, eight knockouts. But like the first two rounds, when he did hit me or he touched my glove, I ain't really feel nothing. So I got a little lazy on defense because, like the whole fight, he ain't, I ain't, he hurt me at all. I ain't feel no like his punches just felt like like pity pats, pity pats. Okay. Yeah. What was uh your reasoning of even wanting to start um in boxing? I didn't. I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I hated it. My uh my dad forced me to do it. My dad was. He came, I was small when I was growing up, so, like, I ain't never get bullied, but my dad, he just wanted to make sure I didn't. So, he was like, you gonna box. He, Because he used to box. He was like, you gonna box. Uh, you could quit once you learn how to do it, once you get a little good at it. But then I started getting good at it. We was traveling. I was making friends and boxing and stuff. So, I was like, eh, ain't no point in me quitting. Then I ended up falling in love with it when I was, like, a teenager, so. That's what's up. That's what's up. When was like the first time that you felt like, oh, I'm really good at this? Oh, I was six. I remember, I don't know that. I know that exactly. So I thought I was okay. I thought I was good. But then it was the national PAL tournament. I was 16, but it was the Olympic year. So at that time, the age groups was 17 to 34. And I had never fought in the men's division yet. But I was still 16, and I turned 17 before the Olympics. So they let me fight in the men's division while I was still 16. And then going to that tournament, I wasn't really confident in myself. I, that was when I was like, okay, I'm okay. But I ain't. I don't know if I'm special. I don't know if I'm, like, like really good. Then I ended up winning that tournament, and that's when I realized, like, oh, all right. Because I was 16 fighting grown men. Yep, yep, yep. That's how it is. That's what, it, like, what in the Golden Gloves and stuff like that. Like now they changed it to you got to be eighteen or nineteen. But back then I was sixteen fighting grown men all the way. Like the like I fought a guy that was twenty four. I think the guy that was twenty two. So that yeah, was when I realized I'm like I'm really good at this. Yeah, when when I I fought in '07 and the Golden Gloves, and I was 16 fighting somebody 28. So yeah. I understand where you came from, you know. Um, but uh, nevertheless, um, in the comment section, people said that you're from Chicago. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Um, talk to me about, you know, uh, you know, up the upbringing of, of Chicago in, in a boxing sport. Uh, so Chicago not really a boxing city. It's, it's more so. But they started the amateurs there, though. Yeah, they focus on uh, the Golden Gloves. 
Yeah, I know. Yeah, they focus on basketball here, uh, but it's not really a strong, I guess, boxing community here. It ain't really. I mean, I'm trying to change that. That's one of my goals in my career to change that and make make Chicago a boxing city. Make like people right. come out for boxing in this city because it's not too many. Like, I mean, you keep up with boxing. It's not too many people that's making noise from Chicago that name on the scene. So I'm trying to. I'm trying to change that, you know, add kids, kids around. They can see if they see me doing good, it'll inspire them to do good. Like like Derrick Rose, when he everybody seen him make it get drafted, that inspired everybody to they want to play basketball. So hopefully if I can have some type of success that inspire kids to want to box then that that's all good for me. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, Derek Joe uh uh Derek Rose was a nasty point guard, man. I wish he didn't get hurt. Yeah. Um but nevertheless, man, um, like obviously you have sparred a lot of high level fighters. Um, talk to me about some of the the top guys on your list when it comes down to sharing the ring with. Oh, Bud for sure, Bud number one. Mm-hmm. Bud, I sparred. I was, I'm, I just name. I ain't gonna get him. so that's my that's he is the best fighter I ever sparred with. But just like on some names, I sparred uh, Pacquiao, Andre Berto, Jorge Linares, of course Shakur. Uh, Regis, uh, Brian Mendoza, uh, there's a bunch. I, I, I'll be forgetting for real. Robert Easter, uh, yeah, I'll be forgetting. That's a lot. Well, I, I like those names. Um, you mentioned you know, number one pound for pound fighter, and then you right after mentioned Pacquiao, which was supposed to happen and it never did. Now that you was able to share the ring with both of them, like who would you think uh, would uh, win that that battle? Just, I always thought Bud would win that fight. Like even back in 2016, 15, 16, when I had sparked both of them, I always said I thought Bud would win that fight. I mean, I think I think that's why it never happened. Yeah, correct, correct. Bob didn't want to want to do it to his homeboy Pacquiao. Yeah, I think that, I think that's why it never happened. Right. Speaking upon Bud, um, talk to me. Uh, what do you think about that fight with Terrence Crawford and uh, Errol Spence? Did you see that happening? So I was at the fight, so I didn't. I seen you too with, with all the uh, the problems outside of it as well. Oh, I seen okay. you getting into that shit. Yeah, I was like, oh, shit. yeah. I, uh, so I, I haven't watched the fight back. I don't really want to watch the fight back. Cause I I love Bud, that's my brother. But I know EJ too. I know Errol too. So it's kind of it'll be. I don't know. I don't want to see see it like close up. Cause I was at the fight. I was on the floor. But it's like you know you can't really see all the details that's going in on the ring. But it was like I I felt like like EJ not making no excuses. So I don't think people should make them for him. He said he said he was good. He got in there. Obviously, I think the weight probably played a part, but I don't think you can use that as an excuse. I think uh, Bud was just able to do more stuff in the ring. I think Errol, his whole plan was to press and pick the pace up. Like that was his only, the only plan he had. I think, and Bud took the jab away from him, so he couldn't really get nothing going. Right. Um. You know, what were your thoughts when round two came and he scores that that two one combination knockdown? Did you see uh, you, you kind of seen where it was leading? That's not even the point where I say, "Oh, dang, it, it might be over." That's not the point. It wasn't even a punch. It was like Errol Puts. they had, they had tied up or something, and like Puts. Errol was trying to pull him, move him, and he couldn't move him. And then Bud like pushed him, and he flew back a little bit, and then that's when I was like, "Oh." It might be. This might be over with. Mm. Cause that's you believe that was his better chance was like you know being able to impose his will. That yeah, but I thing. even me before the fight when people would ask me, I would always say nah, like, cause Bud's a big kid. He play all the time, so I I know how strong he is because he always trying to wrestle everybody. And you know he used to wrestle, so when he get a grip on you, you can't get out. So I know he like I know he's super strong and. That was I just I didn't know if he was stronger than Arrow because Arrow's strong too, but when I seen that I was like, oh, because I think 
Errol's only chance in that fight was to come forward and push Bud back. Right, right. Um, I completely agree. Um, you know, I used to box. My cousin used to wrestle. And when we used to get into tussles, I was a little bit bigger than him. But for some reason, because they train <laughs> yeah. that, like that, it's just like it's going to – it don't matter the size. Yeah, know? but he's super strong when it comes to that, like like just pushing, pushing around and stuff. What do you think about uh, the rematch? Uh, if you if do you believe it's gonna end the same way at one hundred and fifty four pounds? Uh, I don't know. I think it's a possible outcome. It's a possible outcome that, that it might end the same way. Uh, uh, you just gotta see. But I don't know. I think I still I still think Bud win. I think maybe Errol will do a little bit better because I do think his weight played a factor, but I don't really see strategically, I guess. I don't know what he possibly he might be able to do to to uh to close that gap because it was a wide gap. Mm-hmm. Like I under like I understand the weight problem and everything, but like it was a wide gap from the beginning of the fight. You talking about skills. Yeah. So I don't really know what he could do, him and his team could do to like, as far as a game plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, where do you think your boy Bud's ceiling is? You know what I'm saying? You've got to share the ring with him. Um, and it's like, you know, our people in his second knockdown, he went to the neutral corner, looked at Jamel Charlo. I like it. <laughs> I yo, I enjoyed it. It reminded me flashbacks of Roberto Durant did that to Alfredo Benitez. Um, what you think about that matchup? I'm going, but uh, Charlo can fight. Charlo, nice. I think Charlo got a chance against Canelo actually. But okay, I we'll think, get into that one. I think, but I think, but I think, but pull that off. Uh, and I don't know how how stable Charlo is up here, and I think Bud can get can can fluster him. Make him, make him miss, make him get sloppy, make him just like start doubting himself at the end. Yeah. Um, so you favor him. I, I obviously like, I overheard that, you know, when it came down to, you know, uh, the Spence camp, Spence was like the better fighter out of everybody in that. Yeah, camp. I heard, I heard the same thing before. Yeah. So, um, but, and I know we don't want to give, Spence the excuses, right? But mm-hmm. it's just like that type of style after a car crash like that, because it's not like a slick style. Um, yeah. it it could it could do something to you. So yeah, due, due, due to the fact that we did see and hear about the sparring with Jamel and Spence, and and I we we didn't see it, but that that could have happened then. What about now? Mm-hmm. You know, uh, is that the same thing? Um. So I figured, do you believe it could be possibly a, a better matchup uh, due to styles at least? When yeah, it comes I think it's, from- yeah, I think it'd be I think it'd be more challenging for Bud just based on the style because uh, I think Charlo more mobile, a little more mobile than Arrow. Uh, he probably can mix it up a little bit more, uh, but I think mentally Arrow is a lot stronger than him. Mm-hmm. So that might that'll play a part. I think mentally. Charlo kind of, I don't know. Obviously, he's not weak mentally. He undisputed champion, but I think somebody like Bud, it it frustrate him. Right. Kind of like Tony Harrison did that first fight. Correct. Correct. Like, I believe, I think Bud can box him like that, but it'll be more violent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for real, for real. Um, in the comments, uh, people are asking uh, – Tarvin Marshall fought yesterday. Uh, do you believe he was like a gassed up uh, prospect or do nah, you- uh, Trayvon? Yeah, yeah. Like I don't know him, but I know, like I know him. I kind of we shared a locker room when I fought in uh, when I fought on Christmas in two thousand twenty one. <laughs> yeah. Nah, I was laughing at that comment. <laughs> oh, 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 uh, yeah, we shared a locker room at, uh, in twenty twenty one. So he cool. I uh, I talked to him from time to time. Uh, He's just young. I think, I think he wasn't, shouldn't have been in that fight yet. 
Like even though my straight, because I spar with I spar with uh my straight in Vegas all the time when I'm a camp. I spar with them all the time. Uh, I just think they 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 rushed them. He only had eight fights. Like my straight, he only got a couple fights too. But he's thirty something years old. He had like 300, 400 amateur fights. He went to the Olympics twice, so he got a wealth of experience in. Trayvon ain't had that experience. Uh, right. Um, now, leading up to that other fight that you just said that Jamel has a great opportunity to beat Canelo. Um, why you say that? How, why you feel that way? He's jumping two divisions. Uh, what are your mm -hmm. thoughts? I don't think. I don't think Canelo is that big of a guy, so I don't think the size difference is like dramatic. A dramatic size difference. And Charlo's kind of a big guy. So, Charles huge for 154. Uh, he's been there for a long time. And at one time, him and Canelo both was at 154 at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, and like he said that he's been known that he was the one getting the fight. So, he's been preparing for that weight jump for a long time. So, he, right. like, even, I guess, the, everybody, me too included, everybody thought it was Jamal. But in his, I seen a recent interview. He said it was always him working on that fight. They was always negotiating that fight with him. So he said he'd been getting ready to jump up to 168. So, what are the keys to victory in that fight? You believe? Uh, at this point in Canelo' career, I think uh, he kind of he don't throw combinations no more. Right. Uh, he just try to load up, and I think Charlo probably could take take advantage of that. Cause he showed his last fight with Castaño, he still know how to move, use his feet. So uh, he been he been he got a chance, I think. He yeah, got a chance. I think uh, I think his game plan kind of probably be similar to what he did with Castaño that last fight when he was moving and boxing. Uh, Canelo, of course, Canelo don't throw as many punches. Canelo sharper though. He he faster. He gonna he gonna try to catch him with something clean. And he he cracking more too. Yeah. Um, ain't got a better chin, so it's like it's kind of like Castano on steroids without. Uh, yeah, this the is a, tank. yeah, it's a lower volume of. He don't punch throw as many punches, but correct. He he's sharper. He but it's just a because Canelo load up pretty much on everything nowadays. I don't know. I mean, it it was pretty much like the fight last night, man. Um, and it could turn into something like that. Uh, Navarrete, I don't know, it, you know, he's a 130 pound to fight in Oscar Valdez and, you know, his volume of punching, he threw, um, a thousand thirty eight punches, uh, for the yeah. fight. And it would, that's, you know how it is. It's, it's overwhelming, especially with a guy that is kind of orthodox. Like he's just unpredictable. You don't know where the, the shots are really coming. Um, <laughs> but I like that. I like, do you, so you believe it's like a 50, 50 fight? Uh, I'll say 60 40 55 for yeah 60 40 ish mm -hmm. 60 40 ish Jamal? Mm -hmm. no nah, canelo oh okay i think, I think canelo canelo should obviously be the favorite but yeah and he's a favorite in your eyes as well yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i just think Jamil has a chance to win i see i've been saying i've been saying a lot of people say he don't got a chance to win but i don't think that's i don't think that's the case Valid. Yeah, I I, I interviewed uh, interviewed uh, Richardson Hitchens yesterday. He actually said the same thing you said. Uh, he has a sixty percent chance that Canelo will uh, be victorious in that fight. Mm -hmm. um, nevertheless, um, you know, dropping down a couple weight classes. Um, you know, you said that you you sparred um, Shakur Stevenson and you sparred, but. Um, would you have to say those are the top two guys that you shared the ring with as far as number two goes with the Shakur? Uh, probably. Yeah, mo yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm cool with the thinking. With me and when we, like, when I get in there with them, we, it's just like thinking and making adjustments the entire time. And that's, that's more challenging than somebody just going to try to press and fight like i like that used to give me problems but i know how to deal with that now so that don't really bother me yeah. like thinking making adjustments that don't bother me either but it's a challenge trying to figure stuff out mm -hmm. and that was one of the camps that i was referring to that was always telling me look out for kind of sims you know he could fight um you know 
there's a lot of controversy and, and a lot of hype at the 135 division. Um, you know, there's so many different matchups that we want to see. Uh, what's the matchup that you would like to see that you really can't call it? Or you you, you can call it. But at 135? Yeah. Oh, that's easy. Tank and Devin. I mean, Tank and Shakur. Correct. Correct. And, you know, I ask so many fighters and they say the same different thing, the same thing, the same thing. And it, it turns into a, a Devin, a Devin Haney fan club coming at me saying that I'm a, my channel is a Devin hater. <laughs> and, and it's not like that at all. I think Devin's a good fighter. I just believe that there is a skill gap in there, you know, when it comes to being a well-rounded fighter. Um, now, who do you favor in that fight without being biased? I can't not be biased in that fight. <laughs> Honestly, I cannot be. I can't. I can't not be biased in any uh, Shakur fights. Like I'm all. I, 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 I mean, even me not being biased, I still think don't nobody at one thirty five beat him. There you go. So, well, well, what do you see in that matchup that he becomes uh, victorious? He's just smart. Uh, he's smart. He's not gonna. Like his last fight, he obviously he felt superior to do in every way, so he put himself in a little danger. He couldn't because the dude couldn't touch him, no matter how close they was. Uh, but I think in a fight like that with Tank Shakur would be cautious. He wouldn't put himself in position in dangerous positions, and I think he'd just take whatever is given to him. Of course, everybody thinks I don't know. They think Tank uh, just a puncher, but no, Tank got skill. Tank can box. I just don't think he could box with Shakur. And, of course, he got power, so it's always that possibility. But I just think Shakur, he's smart. And he know how to handle himself. He know how to maneuver. He know how to stay out of the way. He know how to touch you, and you can't touch him. Uh, and he he can fight, like, at every range. And he tough. Y'all ain't, ain't got to see it yet because ain't nobody gave him no reason to to show no heart for real he, he but you he, see it in the gym yeah he he walked he's been walking through people in fights but if he needs to go there then he'll go there yeah yeah absolutely like um you know one of my good friends is zab judah and he does not even want to see a shakur and devin fight you uh, know um he keeps it 100 with me all, all the time um but nevertheless that matchup uh you know the devin haney and shakur matchup I mean, um, you seen that Devin, you know, offered yeah, them him both. Money. I ain't even. I them both. Both of them, my boys. So like, <laughs> hey, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so they're both, both, both them, my guys. Bro. So you don't have a horse in the race when it comes to those two guys. Yeah, Devin and Shakur, them, my, them, them, my guys. Both. Of them. You been in the ring with uh with Devin? Yeah, I sparred with him uh for them Cambosis fights. Okay. Yeah. What makes them two different? Uh. Devin, well, at this point, Devin used his feet a lot more than Shakur. Like, he used his feet for defense. And Shakur, like, right there, he always in position to counter. Okay. So do you, do, do you believe that is a flaw in Devin Haney, uh, his game, due to the fact that he keeps himself off position? No, I wouldn't say it's a flaw. He not always out of, he not always out of position. Because uh, in, in his fight, the last fight, he... He ain't really, he wasn't doing that a lot. Uh, I think it's just, a, I think he's still growing. He's still learning how to sit there. I think Shakur just advanced for the for the stage that he on. Do you, how do you feel you about your boy uh, moving into your division now? You know, possibly fighting Regis Progress. Uh, that's a, uh, that's a good fight. Uh. And you spar both of them. Yeah. <laughs> Stop playing me. Stop playing me, Kenneth. Yo, let yeah, me know your fight. prediction on that fight, though. That's a good fight. I probably lean, lean Devin. Go, go, go. Yeah. I probably lean Devin's way. Keeps the victory in that. That's exactly what I just said. Uh, movement. Movement. I think his the feet, the feet is what, the key to that. Uh, Regis kind of flat footed and like a plotter. He wants you to, he wants you to be right there. And we already know Devin's not going to be right there. So, is that a fifty-fifty fight, or you you would have to lean more on? Uh, nah, uh, I definitely lean towards Devin. Yeah, 
Yeah, especially, I mean, you only like they say, the only good is your last performance. The only thing is just so the other guy, he was uh, the guy Regis just fought was moving a lot. So I fought that guy in the amateurs, actually. That's funny, Danieto Zorita. Yeah, yeah I, I fought him in the amateurs at an international tournament. Uh, smoked him, you laughing? Yeah, 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 I smoked be, him. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, humbly uh, speakily, <laughs> yeah, he uh. He's not really a mover, but him moving even gave yeah, Regis problems. The right hand did too. Yeah, so I think I think Devin Devin got quick feet. He know how to use angles, so I think that'll give Regis super a, a lot of problems. Um, what other things you see in in those two fighters being able to share the ring with them in sparring that is is a key, like is is real, real, real um things that fans don't really see you know what i'm saying because we, we when we talk about like mind power when we talk about being disciplined um i think that those things could be also keys yeah to victory um, yeah uh, i think like i want i ain't really a, with them a, like I, I kick it with devin sometimes outside of the gym but devin discipline uh i ain't never really been with regis besides like Sparring, we just sparring. That, that's pretty much it. But, but that's what I mean, as far as sticking to the game plan, being disciplined, uh-huh. sticking to the game plan. You know, because I mean, obviously, we see that Regis is really complaining about the the, the date. Yeah, um, and you know, people can say that this is strategic when it comes down to, um, you know, Devin, or it could really just be a business move. I mean, I think he said they that that's the same day Tyson Fury fight, and that makes sense. Ain't nobody gonna watch it. Right, right. Um, so like, does Regis have a puncher's chance in this fight? And is is Regis cracking like that? Yeah, Regis can punch. It's not like a, like a, it's like thud and like everything. Like he heavy handed, I guess. He's heavy handed? Yeah, like it ain't, it wasn't, at least when I sparred with him, I didn't feel no, like you hit me, you, he hit somebody and they just like be done, like. Kind of like a Ryan Garcia hook or something like that. I don't think it's like that. It's like more like just steady. Just steady. He just heavy handed everything. Got something on it. Mm. How about when it comes to like gas tank and, you know, volume punching when it comes to those two? Because, you know, Devin got a gas tank and he 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 definitely let him fly as well. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, see, me and Regis was sparring that was a long time ago, so I, he probably I know a lot didn't change since then. We we sparred that was two thousand seventeen, eighteen. So I know like I didn't change. I don't even fight the same how I used to fight in two thousand seventeen, eighteen. I, my yeah, style five years was ago, different. So yeah, I know a, 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 a lot of things probably changed since me and Regis sparred. So I don't really I can't even like answer really that question about him. Right, right. Um, you know. Obviously, we got the lineal champion, Teofimo Lopez. Mm-hmm. I mean, he got a lot of skills. He has a lot of athletic ability. Mm-hmm. Do you do you kind of like, I know that you said that everyone's kind of like in the same boat, but do you, would you have to say that him beating Josh Taylor, the, the top the top dude in the division, do you believe that that kind of sets him apart from everybody? Uh. I mean, I, that they got to make him the top guy in the division, clearly. But I think that as like it, like Styles make fights. Uh, I seen it like the second round. It wasn't like not no. It wasn't the power of To. It wasn't that. It was the athleticism. Like he was able to move. It was the footwork. It was the yeah. Sport. Like Josh Taylor, his whole rise, he beat great great fighters, great records, but he ain't fight nobody that was athletic like to like my dad people was asking me uh he was asking me who i think would get to problems he's because yeah it's regis and i don't think i think to probably beat regis now at this point after seeing that josh taylor fight at first i thought it was like 50 50 but i thought about it i think to beat regis i mean to beat to is going to have to be somebody like that's athletic like like i would get devin that chance that, that a chance to beat him because of styles. Mm-hmm. I don't think Regis got the style to to beat him. 
Now, the style like the style like mine's I would give him problems. Richardson would give him problems. Yep. Facts. Um, and then you know, when we talk about this division, man, I always gotta mention it because nobody will. Subriel Matias, the one with the IBF. Uh-huh. Not necessarily the more different, completely different style than the guys that we're mentioning. Yeah. But the most of avo- one of the more avoided fighters. And when we talk about people not mentioning his name, I believe that there's a reason for that. Yeah. Um, what do you think about him as a fighter? And, you know, he has one of the highest uh, KO ratios in the game. So do you believe he opposes one of the biggest threats? Because Richardson Hitchens says that, you know, he believes he's the top dog in that division. Yeah, he uh, yeah, he poses a big threat. Uh, I wouldn't say he's the top dog. I, like I said, I think Tiafima, you got to – Called Tiafimo the top dog in the division after he beat the guy that was he he beat the man so mm-hmm. he's the man. Uh, T- uh, Matias, yeah, he probably one, two, three. He right there. Uh, he got a his style is action packed. So, and but I think as far as like him getting big fights, it's the same problem I got. It's a uh, a. Uh, High risk, but really low reward. Low reward, yeah, it's the same problem I got. I think. Um, do you believe that you that that the reason for that is going to be able to you're going to have to take harder routes? You know, I think Richardson told me this to, like, yesterday too. He was like, you know, my career hasn't been easy. I've yeah, always. I, I mean, if everybody, anybody that keep up with me, they know I ain't nothing. Your, yours wasn't me. easy. Correct. Yeah, ain't nothing been given to me. I had to. When I fought Elvis, I was a, what, plus 1,200 underdog? So. Oh, thank you for that, too. <laughs> I, I actually made a a, a a good a good penny, you know, uh, for that no one. Problem. Yeah, I was plus 1,200 underdog in that fight, my last fight. Like, I'm fighting a guy that should have been world champion, and my first 12-rounder was – high pace, like nonstop. So ain't not been easy for me. So I don't expect nothing to get easier from this point. Mm-hmm. That's just how I go. Some people, yeah, like everybody rode different. Some people got it where they can just cruise their way and make a good living and be good. And some people like me, we got to grind and get to it. Right. Uh, when we talk about like good hobbies for your, you know, outside of boxing, um, it seems that you have a daughter. Yeah, she's right here. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So, how does it feel to be, you know, a fighter, dad, all in the same time, in Chicago? Uh, it's great. Uh, I, they go to the gym with me pretty much every time I go to the gym. So, yeah, that's cool. they, they always there, and she always running around the gym, hopping in the ring, just running around doing stuff. So, it's good to see that. Uh, hi, baby. No, I got a son too. So I just my son five months. He's gonna be six months next week. So. Congrats! Thank Congrats. you. Um, does that does that level you as a fighter? Because you can see a lot of your friends have a lot of money, throw a lot of pool parties. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, you know, does that level you up? Because I mean, guys like Shakur Stevenson, it seems to me that um, he's really focused. I know he has a mentor like Bud. Um, do you have a mentor as well, or is it just like the family man in you that keeps uh, you level? I mean, I got, I got my 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 fiance. She is, she keeps me grounded. Yeah, she keeps me. She keeps me good. She keeps me making sure I'm focused, making sure I'm locked in on when I need to be. Uh, she don't let me stray away from what I need to be doing. So like even my, my dad, my uncle, my mom, we got they all like my, my family unit is good. Like they since since I've been professional, they've been right there. Everybody everybody that I just named, they from the beginning, they always make sure I'm on point. Even when I wasn't signed, I wasn't having I wasn't couldn't get a fight, I wasn't making no money. They always made sure that I Stay locked in, cause for a while I fought for free. I fought like two times. They make not no money, so. But small club events. Yeah, they made they made they make make sure I stay grounded and stay doing what I'm supposed to do. 
Right. How's that feeling, though, as far as, you know, breaking that point of not selling your own tickets and needing to, you know, uh, just focus on your craft? Uh, say it again, bro. You, you know, I, he was reading the comments. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, how does it feel that you, you're past that point of selling your own tickets on these uh, club shows and just focusing on your craft? It's good, for real. Because uh, I still go. I still go to support local guys that that that's doing that's in that situation. So it feel good to just go back and see that that's where I was fighting at a couple years ago. That's where I was at when people didn't believe in me, people had forgot about me, people wrote me off. So it's just good to know that I mean really I'm just proud of myself for real. That's how I feel about it. I'm just proud of myself that I, I stay with it. I ain't let, let the naysayers and stuff. Because I keep up. I read everything. Like, it don't really? bother me. But I make sure I, like, I like. I won't lie. I look, up, I look my name up on YouTube, like, multiple times a week. See if there's anything new. I look myself up. I touch my name on Twitter multiple times a week to see if anything new. Like, uh, after one of my fights, and... Not the Elvis fight, but the fight after that. I fought another dude that was undefeated, and I beat him. And somebody had tweeted saying, yeah, Kenny seems real good, but he can't handle pressure fighters. I'd like to see if he fight a pressure fight. I had that, that tweet saved. <laughs> so, matter of fact, last week I, I, I responded to it because I had been thinking about it. I've been thinking about it since Christmas on 2021. Wow. And I was like, I hopefully my last fight answered your question because dude was a relentless press fighter so yeah a vet he was a vet yeah so um, i use I, I i keep up with everything just to like i don't take it to heart but it's in the back of my mind just thinking about everything that i see oh uh, yeah i remember spence saying the same thing when it came down to his fight leading up to the crawford fight he was saying uh -huh. the same thing he saved all the text messages and and all that stuff and um Yo, you know, you know, Zab, Zab's, uh, he's rapping now? I seen something about that. I ain't hear it, though. <laughs> Yo, he did a verse. He did a verse with Terrence Crawford and Spence, man. And I'm going I'm to I'm send it to you. You're going to be like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> um, nevertheless, Kenny, um. You know, when we talk about, like, other than your father, um, you know, getting you into the sport, what were some of the guys that you looked up to watching on TV that kind of inspire you to get the style that you have today? Mm, a lot, because I, I still, I still a lot from everybody. <clears throat> yeah, Andre Ward, for one. Uh, and then it's like, it's probably people that you don't even know, like just people that I see. Like my brother, Ed Brown, he got killed in 2016, but I used to steal stuff from him all the time. Like uh, he really, <clears throat> you would think you would think that somebody that's, I guess, like world champion, because I done met a lot of people and I'm cool with a lot of people, you would think that's my, yes, motivation, motion, motive, they motivate me, but really it's like, the opposite, really. It's the small, the people that y'all don't know, the people that don't nobody know. That's what motivate me. Mm. That's that's what motivate me to try to get to the level of the people that's above me. I understand. I'm at like I'm not even where I want to be, and it's people that's professional fighters that look up to me. So I feel like if I can get where the people that y'all expect me to look up to, if I can get to that point. Then it inspire it inspire people that's coming up to try to get to that point. I understand fully. You you can learn a lot from just a bum around the street. Not calling you a bum or anything like that, but yeah, you can learn about anybody. You know, um, you know what? Where do you see your ceiling lie? You know, when it comes down to your career, you had 140 pounds now. Um, where do you think is your peak? As far as weight, as far as division, yeah. I don't know, because I'm almost 30. I don't know if I'm going to grow no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But I know I can fight 47. I've had a couple fights at 47. So, yeah. 47 is a possibility. If, you know, if, for the money. Yeah, for the, yeah, if it was right, 47 possibility. It's not, that's not really, I can do that. And I'm, and, I'm a big, I'm a, I'm a big guy. I, I realized that my last fight when I was watching, I was big. I look big compared to dude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you fought big too. Yeah. Um, you know, what are your goals in boxing before you uh, hang them up? Uh, I mean, obviously, that title, world champion. Uh, <clears throat> world champion belts. But at the end of the day, most important thing is I want to make enough money to take care of my family, make sure my family's straight. Like, right. everybody, like I be seeing people, Anthony Joshua, for one, he's like, yeah, money's not nothing. But he got money already. So, of course, he's going to say, he gonna say money not enough to fight for. Right. You shouldn't fight for money. I'm like, bro, you a super millionaire. Of course you're gonna you're gonna say it's not enough to fight for money. Money is very motivating because it could take care of my family. So easily my, said than done. Yeah. So that's my thing. I just at the end of the day, that's the most important thing to me, being able to provide for my family. Right. Um, like has anything like came to mind as far as like you know, what would you, what, what would you be a, your best purchase? You know, once you get that big check, uh, what would you like to, to spend your big money on? And um, maybe aspirations after boxing or what you would like to do? Cause you're still young. So my, my fiance, she said, I don't do nothing. So I don't really do nothing. I don't know nothing about cars. Like, so, I mean, I get us a house for all of us to, that we would like. But that's pretty much. I mean, I buy. I like shoes. That's my thing. I buy shoes. I like. I like shoes. I buy a lot of shoes. As far as like purchasing stuff, I don't really know. I just if I want something, then I just it's it's like a spur of the moment. I don't really think about buying stuff. But I really don't. I don't really do that for real. Mm. Um, but what about when it comes down to like maybe a business? When yeah, it comes uh, of course that my um, I got my my uncles. They they work with me talk to me about that type of stuff all the time so because my uncle's they business man one of my uncles he my manager so he he making sure he gonna make sure i that's my he's been supporting me since i was since i was like 12 years old when i needed to get to tournaments and everything so i already yeah he always talked to me about making sure that we gonna have something set up and play and play for when this over when i can't do this no more is there anything that comes into mind like that you would like? I mean, I I think I have a great boxing mind, so I want to coach. I want to coach own gym? at some at some level, yeah. So own your own gym and become a coach, a trainer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know about owning my own gym. Maybe open the gym. My dad can run it, and you can freelance. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to traveling, um, for the sport that you love to do, uh, what what's the best state that that you love, uh, you know, traveling to for boxing? Oh no, my man! Oh no! Uh, so I was in the amateurs. I was in the USA team, so I went all over the world. Uh, or country? I ain't really like when I was out the country, honestly. Went to Kazakhstan, uh, and those like going on them trips. It's not really fun because you can't try no food. Got to make weight. Yeah, so it was like like you out the country, but it's it's work. It ain't really no. As far as states, I don't know because I'm a like Chicago till I die. I love Chicago. I think it's the best city on the planet. So. <laughs> So tell me what, what right right away like is it the deep dish pizza that's the best or is it the pan? I mean, all right, I'm gonna tell you. So Chicago people be trying to stunt like deep dish is just for a tourist. I eat deep dish mm -hmm. on a regular basis, and it's delicious. So better than the deep style, huh? Better than the, the Detroit style pizza? Yeah, I don't like Detroit style pizza. You gotta go to Giordano's deep dish is good. 
You know Troy, right? Troy Eisen? Yeah, yeah. So it's a Giordano's in Vegas. And my fight, I was in camp, but my fight had got canceled. So I instantly went to Giordano's and I got deep dish. And Troy had about like seven weeks before his fight. So I had let him taste the slice. He was like, oh, that's that's good, bro. Like, he was like, yeah. Troy. Uh, so, because like I've seen like pizza reviews too as well. And it's like they were talking about like, uh, your your average Uno's over there is not like the average Uno's in a different state. You know what I'm saying? Because I've had deep dish on Uno's and that's no, that, trash. That, that ain't, it's not, that ain't the same. That ain't, it ain't it? Uh-uh. Nah, that ain't it. You gotta go to your, you, you ever had your Donald's? Nah, never. Yeah, gotta get deep dish from your Donald's, you understand. <laughs> where, where, where? Um, I think, uh, Tank will be fighting in, in, in Chicago uh, this year. I mean, next year. Yeah, so, I've been saying that. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be out there, and I'll, I'll definitely uh, get the trying on that. It's like that. Hopefully, we can link up as well. Yeah, hopefully, I can get on that that, that, that card. Yeah, because I'm with PBC, so. Yeah, makes sense. And that that's a, that's a great card for, for you to, you know, display your talent for sure. Um, you have a relationship with Tank at all? Uh, Nah. Like I know him from the embassy, but I don't. We don't. I don't really. I ain't. Don't talk to him. I don't know him. But I guess you could say I don't know him no more. We ain't. I don't talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Well, my guy. Like, man, I, I, like if he see me, I'm sure he'll speak to me. But and yeah. I speak back. But like I, I, I seen Coach Calvin and Kenny at, in Vegas, and they they stopped me, gave me a hug, and talked, talked to me and stuff. So. Yeah, they they um they're cool people, man. They're definitely cool people. Um. And Giovanni's is trash. See, they, someone's already... Somebody in the comments talking about Giovanni. He's from Ohio, so... It ain't the same. It ain't the same in Ohio. It ain't the same in Michigan. Yeah, Ohio. I don't know. Who eat pizza from out there? I, I love Ohio people, but... What do y'all eat? They're not known for their pizza. Or food, for, for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> what do they eat? <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, my man, I appreciate your time, bro. Uh, appreciate got a you. Lot of, a lot of content here. Um, my last question, though, is um, uh, anything that you would like to tell uh, to your peoples, people that don't know you, people that are fans of you and your skill set that you haven't really mentioned in the media that you would like for them to know? Mm. Nah, it's done. It's just done. Just keep toning in into the fights. I'm getting. I'm still getting better. So, y'all, I, I, I will tell y'all, y'all still ain't seen like the best of me, like the best version of me that y'all ain't seen all my skills and everything that I could do in the ring. Like I'm winning. I'm winning the fights, but that's not even me. Like the people that know me, they know what I can do and like how like I'm special. I'm really special. I, I just gotta I ain't I got have basically I haven't put it all together. You need that opponent to bring it out of you. Yeah, so I think eventually y'all will see. And the homie from Ohio said Yeah I see um, they eat was... corned beef in Polish. <laughs> 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 well you already know that's like one of those Irish yeah, males, no, you know? corned beef in Polish is well, Kenny, you already know, man. It was a pleasure. Till the no next problem. time. Thank you. You already know. Much love and bless to you and all your family. Thank you. You already know, man. It's Mill City Boxing, home of the high-level pro boxing media. That's Kenneth Sims right there. Uh, humble dude. Uh, great guy. Um, make sure you guys tune into his career as well because, you know, um, the more you see some of these fighters – um, in their upbringing, no matter what age they're at, you know what I'm saying? It's just a moment of time until they get that big fight. So, um, guys, make sure you guys smash the like button. Uh, tell a friend to tell a friend. Share this interview. This is Mr. D Boxing. God bless, and on to the next.